Congressman Lucas, thank you, sir, and I hope next January the 3rd I can call you Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Thank the uh, members and representing the state of Oklahoma for the kind resolution there, the same way with the Senate, and good words that the head of the region said, and also the head of higher education in the state of Oklahoma. And I am so honored to be here and see these archives. And, uh, you know, life goes so fast, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, uh, it's hard to believe that uh, I grew up in this little town of 2,500, and uh, it was a great town. I always tell Mayor Brown, who's done a great, great job here over about 12 or 15 years. Thank God I was born in Weatherford, not Hyde River Clinton. <laughs> 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 You know, sometimes you just rock out. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I was an only child, and my mother had a ride in Oklahoma in a covered wagon, 1901, and a dugout uh, out near, too far from Cheyenne, Oklahoma, there in Link Harper County, and, uh, near a little town called Cheney, it doesn't exist anymore. My father went to Vanderbilt and came out as a dentist and, and that and then they wanted to move to a, a college town in case they had children, so they moved they bought a dental practice and moved to Weatherford. Mm -hmm. And uh, so in one it's hard to say anybody else could match that progress in an interval time to have my mother arrive in a covered wagon and see on live color TV her only child fly to the moon. Wow. That, that, I don't think that increment of change will ever exist again. We will go back to the moon, but it's, uh, it's, it's not easy, it's hard. And the great author um, of the last century, Arthur C. Clarke, wrote a series of great books. He said a thousand years from now, when historians look back on the 20th century, they will note that yes, we had two major wars involving the industrialized countries, mostly in the Northern Hemisphere, twice, World War I, World War II. Mm -hmm. But what they'll remember most of the 20th century is for the first time in recorded history, that men have gone and walked on the moon and safely returned. Mm -hmm. I'm really glad that was in Kennedy's speech about safety of the church. I was so fortunate that things have worked. I had some great teachers here, Dr. Spann, Dr. Mitchell in high school, Curtis. I went to the Naval Academy when I was 17 years old. It was kind of a tough time for him. My father had died just two weeks before. Mm -hmm. The family didn't have much money. He'd been sick for a while. And uh, mother went to the banker, got a mortgage on the house for $175. Mm -hmm. I had a one-way ticket to the Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. And believe me, failure was not an option. <laughs> <laughs> but also my father, who taught me so much in math, put this matrix of zero to 20, and I had to memorize them all the time. And you go today and ask a student, what is 15 times 15? They'll go to the computer and sit telling you 225. What's 13 times 13? Well, it's 169. I learned that when I was six years old. <laughs> Never forget it. And also, the toughest part was language. I stood at the very top of my class, the Naval Academy, math, science. but. Um, they asked me what language I spoke, foreign language. We didn't teach it in high school. Well, and so I thought, I said, well, I can speak English, and I can speak Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I remember as a little boy, the first transcontinental airways across the United States followed old Highway 66. Mm -hmm. That was American Airlines and TWA. 
And every day as a little boy, five years old, six years old, I'd look up and see these giant silver airplanes flying. I said, I want to do that. I always wanted to fly. And uh, so that's never changed. I always said I wanted to go higher and faster. Well, I did go faster. <laughs> On the way back from the moon, we had more than enough pressure fuel where we, on the back side of the moon, added an extra thousand feet to our velocity. So we made it back to from the moon in 42 hours. And we set the all time world speed record 24,791 miles an hour. <laughs> or in Mach number, Mach 36. Wow. Well, if you want to be scientific, the speed of light is 0.0037% of the speed of light. So we were flat all in the mail. <laughs> we had several management positions. Came on to uh, the Apollo Soyuz, which kind of changed, well, it changed me completely. When I flew Apollo Soyuz, I did not know that oh, 25 years later, I'd be adopting two Russian Northern boys. But I did. But speaking about family, my daughter is here, Karen. And my grandson, Tom, glad to see you. Thank you for coming out. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm so proud that Southwestern would provide this beautiful facility archive for uh, a lot of my congressional testimony, my writings, and effort. And I was very fortunate in flight assignment. And I was assigned to do the first rendezvous in space with Lolly Shara. And also, it's taken a while and twisting some arms. And Max Erie said that flight Gemini 6 proved the method we could use to go to the moon, the lunar orbit rendezvous. Mm -hmm. But you had to do a, a, you know, a rendezvous. Now, we'd read about, you know, Buck Rogers, Fly Story, never always fly. <laughs> but to do a rendezvous is not easy. And you can get yourself in trouble real easy. And I put together a little skunk works type team. We worked it out in about three or four weeks in a basement up in McDonald Aircraft. And that uh, co concentric, co elliptical orbit we did when Shira and I demonstrated that December the 15th, 1965, is the same type we've been using ever since. And nobody has ever missed a run. They better not either. <laughs> <laughs> but it, was, it was great to go to the Naval Academy. The Korean War is going on. And I was a cold warrior. I wanted to go to Korea, shoot out MiGs and kill commies. <laughs> All the way. So. And the Air Force had the first swept wing airplane, the F-86. We have one in the museum. And so, yeah. Pilot training signed that Korean War ended before I could go. So the man was Air Defense Command. And uh, when I'd come back to see my mother who lived here then, and I always liked to drive by Southwest. And then I started after. That's also, a, it's always kind of the idea to teach people you have to think out of the box. But when you do that, you also have to use common sense. And so I was in, after Paul was the commanding general of flight test center. I also had the big area up north on a lake and runway called Groom Lake Facility. Some people call it Area 51. That's where we had the aliens and cryo <laughs> <laughs> you know, Too much publicity down in Roswell. <laughs> 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 But uh, I had trained to fly with the Soviets in space. I had flown in space. I was one of the few Americans that flown in some of their airplanes. And what I found out, I couldn't believe. I knew there was a way we could really stop it. It goes back in their history to Peter the Greater before. The way they have to be told to do things. One on one, they're pretty good fighters, but a total mass and all this. You put out the you put the directions away or the guidance, they go bonkers. So that morning on December 1st, 1977, I was by the runway at Groom Lake 
I think I think he was when the first airplane took off. I was responsible for the testing evaluation of it. Had my test pilot. Got airborne landing gear up and I turned to him and said, Ken, I said this will change air warfare forever if it works. <laughs> and we had two. Then the second one, I came back in there with all the coatings on. And then we saw the data, or the lack of data, in the radar. I said, I know we've got it, and this will change air warfare. I didn't know I'd get a chance to. And about two months after that, the chief of staff called me. I said, come up here, i got to see you in three days. Yes, sir. So I got in the F-4, flew to Washington. He said, I'm promoting you to deputy chief of staff for research, development, acquisition. You've had this experience of Apollo. You know the soldiers. You've got to keep our Air Force ahead of everybody in the world. So I saluted smartly and said, yes, sir. <laughs> so the first thing I started on was stealth. You know, is Laser Lazarski here. There's laser stand up. <laughs> Colonel Lazarski is Air Force retired. <laughs> He was head of Air Force legislative liaison. He retired Senator Enoff. Newton. I was always put together a great staff. He hired Laser to be his military assistant, foreign affairs advisor, veterans. The Laser flew the 117A in Mideast. He knows what it's like. And so when we get our 117A here late this year, we get a rehab max we hope. By the end of the year, we'll have a mannequin the laser's helmet, flight suit, and so, <laughs> so the laser's going to be with us for a long time. <laughs> so it's really great to all the help each other. So, but anyway, back to the archive. It's just beautiful. The way the foundation got started, I had some, started to serve on some large awards, New York Stock Exchange. And you got to stay busy in this life. And I've counted up over the years. I've served on 14 boards on the New York Exchange, one of the American. And a couple of them started to have leverage matching grants for the directors and the senior officers. So I was being in Weatherford, and I called Dr. Hibbert, the president of the university, and asked him for an appointment. So I went up to have a cup of coffee with Dr. Hibbert. I said, Dr. Hibbert, how many millions does Southwestern have in their endowment? <laughs> I'll never forget, she said, well, General, we have about $800,000. I said, well, we better do something about that. <laughs> so I worked it out. I also convinced the chairman of both companies, you got to look at education one way and charity parties in another. So really, you need to, to double that. So we did. So I was able to put endowment to Southwestern, start a Stafford scholarship. People from Weatherford High School needed financial help to go to Southwest. And also, the museum is starting to go, so I put money there. So, I guess uh, I didn't keep track of it, but from what, 1992 to 94, I was the largest donor at Southwest. <laughs> you know, I hadn't got a had to go to school there. I finally did get a degree. I made the. Uh, 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 graduation now at Dress Center in 94, they got a master's degree. So, gee, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, and, uh, Dr. Butler was able to do a session of the house when Mr. Wright was speaking about them. I was presented the first honorary doctor of Southwestern. So I'm very happy. So I'm glad I can do that from be your leading donor from 92 to 94. I guess I'm number three now or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Jim Waits here today? Thanks, uh, okay, well, Jim, Jim uh, did a great job working for you. He came down to see me in a place in Keys and said, I'd like to have you be the chairman of our new fundraiser. I said, well, that's great, Jim. But I haven't graduated. I'm glad to give you money, but I haven't graduated. I said, no, we need you for the name. And, if I can say, here's somebody that hasn't graduated from Southwest. He's giving me money, he's going to get more. So, so Jim is a hell of a salesman. <laughs> so I committed a million dollars to him. And so, uh, as I said, I couldn't give it right to him. He did for a million. So 
You're not putting that life insurance, you're covered. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't call it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I finished 91 orders around this uh, I think I still got a few more orders to go. <laughs> <laughs> Southwestern, a small entity can be more adaptive faster to what the entities, industrial entities in Oklahoma and around here need, for the matter. Far better than a bigger university like OU or OSU can. We can do in two or three weeks what they take them two or three years. So uh, I think Southwestern's got a great future in front of them. All that. Uh, I'm very proud of the, the tie in. So it's worked out real good. So. Uh, originally, on our first scholar we had, we said to pay room and, you know, well, for room and board here and, and the tuition. And that's, after that, we started thinking with Dr. Waits and Dr. Hill and said, hey, now if they live at home, I could have two scholars. <laughs> I've never done this one. So I think, as pointed out, we've had, what, 150 plus scholars. So I'm very proud of them. They've all done real well. So we've got a lot more to go on that. And there'll be a bunch more money coming in there, so should be there for a long time. I'm just so happy and to, to be here and be honored to have my uh, um, my writings and design congressional testimony there. So just want to say to all of you, I didn't see enough. My old friend from football, there's only a couple of us left on the team. And the first team played all 60 minutes. We didn't have face guards. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a great life. And you still got to keep thinking ahead. Think out of the box, but use common sense. So thank you again for this great thank you. Thank you.